Hello and welcome to another video. Before I start I wanted to thank you all for subscribing. I have reached over 5,000 subs now and that is pretty amazing so I thank you all for that. I never thought I would get so many people liking my videos and especially my new ones with me talking. I know my voice and narration style does annoy some people but unfortunately you can't please all of the people all of the time. I appreciate you all watching and especially your input into the channel with your comments and the discussions under the videos. This video is going to be about the prison years of the craze. There is a few things to talk about about the twins during their prison years and as always I will offer my thoughts on some things. I try and give a balanced opinion on the twins. I don't hero worship them. I see the good and the bad. The twins and the rest of the firm were taken to Brixton Prison right after the conclusion of their trials in 1969. They had been housed there while on remand. The twins were in the special unit in Brixton. It was a very secure unit and it consisted of 12 cells at the time. I don't know of any incidents really at Brixton with the twins while they were on remand apart from Reggie breaking Joey Kaufman's jaw. Joey Kaufman was on remand with the twins. He was involved in the selling of stolen bonds and he was also the link to the Mafia in New York. Reg said Kaufman was sitting on the edge of a table tennis table reading a newspaper when Reg hit him with a left hook through the newspaper. After the trial in 1969, the twins and the firm were dispersed to a few prisons. Ronnie went to Durham, Reg went to Parkhurst, Charlie Cray went to Chelmsford, Freddie Foreman went to Leicester. I'm not too sure where the other members of the firm went, but I think Chris Lambriano went to Durham with Ronnie and Connie Whitehead went to Hull. Reg wasn't at Parkhurst for too long though, as in March 1970, he was shipped out to Leicester Prison. Eddie Richardson also arrived at the same time as Reg did at Leicester Prison. Ron didn't settle at Durham and he was in a fight with a fellow con named Mick Copeland. Ronnie was fined £3 from his canteen money and Mick Copeland was transferred to another prison. Mick Copeland was involved in the bubble car murders in the early 1960s. He was sentenced to death but was reprieved and got life instead. Just after Reggie was jailed, Francis's mother, Elsie Shea, petitioned to the Home Office to have Francis reburied under her maiden name. Elsie Shea said she didn't want her daughter's grave being linked to a murderer, but since Reggie owned the grave, it could only be done with his approval. Reggie objected strongly against this as you would expect and Frances stayed laid to rest where she was. A list of 50 people was drawn up who would not be allowed to visit the twins. The list included author John Pearson who was writing the twins book at the time which later became a profession of violence. Violet Cray campaign to get the twins reunited in prison and she wrote to her MP. The Home Office didn't really want this to happen but due to Ronnie Cray getting a bit out of control at Durham it was eventually granted. So the twins were reunited at Parkhurst in February 1971. Ron was moved to Parkhurst first and then Reggie joined him when he moved back to Parkhurst from Leicester. There were some incidents that happened during the twins time at Parkhurst together. Ron was sent to solitary confinement. Ron had a bit of an altercation with a prison officer. Ron wanted his medication but the prison officer refused so Ron whacked him and got 56 days in solitary confinement. Some other things that happened in Parkhurst was the twins wanted to go on rule 43 isolation to get away from the general population as they were tired of the same old faces and conversation. This they done on the 22nd of March 1972. Ron was taken to 
the prison hospital a short time after that though because his mental condition deteriorated and Reg remained on Rule 43, self-isolation. Both the twins eventually ended back up in the general population. On the 17th of April 1973, Ron was found in bed with another prisoner and was told that if it happened again, he would be placed back on Rule 43. The other incident that happened at Parkhurst, which was more serious, was the assault on Roy Grantham. There is two conflicting stories of this. One is said by Reg in his book A Way of Life and the other is given by ex-Parkhurst prisoner at the time, Norman Parker. Norman Parker was serving time for murder. He was housed on a different wing to the twins. The main conflicting things is where it said the assault happened. Reggie says it happened in his cell and Norman Parker says it happened in Roy Grantham's cell. But the fact is that Roy Grantham was violently assaulted. Roy Grantham was serving 11 years for assault and he was shipped to Parkhurst to finish his sentence. Grantham was helped out by the twins, especially by Ron when Grantham was put in solitary confinement. He was brought tea by Ron and cigarettes and all sorts. Ron was helping him with his time in solitary go a bit easier. It wasn't long before Grantham was back on the wing after his stint away in solitary confinement but he soon became a bit of a nuisance going into Ron's cell in the mornings with no invitation. Ron liked to mainly be on his own in the mornings in private in his cell or just with Reg or with another man called Joe Martin. He didn't really like anyone else around at that time of the day. But Grantham would barge in uninvited and one day Ron left a note in Grantham's cell explaining that he liked to either be alone in the mornings or with just Reg and Joe Martin. So if he could not come into his cell in the mornings that would be better. When Grantham found the note he wasn't too happy and he stormed off to Reggie's cell where Ronnie and Reggie were and he ripped the note up and chucked it at Ronnie and said that he didn't want to be in their company anyway. He basically just told them to stuff it. He didn't want to be around them anyway. But Grantham was assaulted and it happened the next morning after he ripped the note up and chucked it at Ronnie. Now, in all prison wings, it's very hard to find weapons. And in Parker's security wing, it was virtually impossible. So the only weapons they could find were two sauce bottles they had. So they emptied the tomato sauce out, wrapped the bottles in a towel and broke them. And now they've got the top of the bottle with very jagged shards. So cut to the following morning, Grantham's lying in bed because he didn't get up for breakfast. Suddenly the door flies open. It's Ronnie. He runs in, he jumps and sits on Grantham's chest and starts slashing away at his face with a broken glass. Reggie, right behind him, jumps in and starts slashing at his stomach. They had a hanger on on the firm called Neil Adamson. Bit of an idiot. He came running in. He'd made a spear. He had a broomstick with a bit of glass taped to the end. And while they were slashing him open, he was stabbing him with the spear. By August 1974, the twins were on the special wing at Parkhurst and were described as withdrawn and spent most of their time in their cells. It was said in a prison report that their prolonged stay in the special unit had caused personality changes. The twins were later moved from the security wing on the 9th of January 1975 to a normal wing, C wing. In July 1976 both brothers were working as cleaners and it was reported that neither exerted themselves. In October 1977 the twins were moved to the hospital wing. I'm not sure why this was but Ron's mental health would have been deteriorating by now and in 1979 on the 25th of July, Ron was sent to Broadmoor Hospital 
in Crowthorne in Berkshire. There was some talk of Reggie being moved to Kingston Prison in Portsmouth, which was a less secure prison, but this never happened and for the time being, Reg remained at Parkhurst. Compared to prison, Ron had it easier at Broadmoor. Broadmoor was more of a hospital environment. Ron wore his own clothes. He had a single bedded cell, later to be a double bed. He had his own lavatory, a stereo system and a TV. Ron was a chain smoker and it was said that he smoked up to 140 cigarettes a day. In 1982, the world got a glimpse of the twins at their mother's funeral. It was the first time they had been seen in about 13 years. Ronnie was first, now classified as criminally insane. And so Ronnie, Ronnie. Then came Reggie, also handcuffed from the maximum security wing at Parkhurst, where a few months ago he tried to kill himself. At the end of the short service, the twins were taken back to their cells without having seen their mother buried. The twins went to the service, but they were not allowed at the graveside. Handcuffed to the biggest prison guards that the prison service could find, it seemed they were not taking any chances with the twins, even though it was very unlikely they would have tried to escape. It was really more of a case of making the twins appear small rather than worrying about any escape attempts. Ronnie's nemesis in Broadmoor was the Yorkshire Ripper, Peter Sutcliffe. Ronnie said of the Yorkshire Ripper, he's a nonce. I won't talk to scum like that who cut up women. He knows better to even look at me in the eye. If I had my way, I would deal with him properly. For good. It is said that Ron arranged for Glasgow villain Jimmy Costello to slash Sutcliffe, but I'm not sure how true that is. It happened in 1983. The attack took place when Sutcliffe was getting water. Costello smashed him twice on the left side of his face with a broken coffee jar. One deep cut ran from his ear to his mouth and required 30 stitches. Costello claimed that Sutcliffe attacked him first, but he did receive an extra five years for the attack. There was a fight that happened between Ronnie and Peter Sutcliffe. I'm not sure what year this was, but I think it was possibly around 1994 or even the start of 1995. Sutcliffe got the upper hand of Ron though. Sutcliffe was the younger man by about 13 years and by that time Ron was ravaged by his medication and just years of being ill and heavy smoking. He was not really in a position to hold his own and it is said he was thrown around like a rag doll. It is said that Reg arranged for revenge on this attack by Sutcliffe on Ronnie and this seems to be the E and K attack on Peter Sutcliffe in March 1997. Sutcliffe was stabbed in the eye with a pen. Unfortunately Ron would not have been able to enjoy this as he had died two years previous. Ron remained at Broadmoor until he died in March 1995. He married twice there. The first time was to Elaine Mildener in 1985 and then to Kate Howard in 1989. Ron divorced both. Before Ron's death, the papers were going wild with stories. Ron's relative freedom in Broadmoor meant he could speak to the press freely and his wife Kate Howard was also given the press stories. Since the craze film in 1990, things really blew up for the twins in the papers. There were stories all types of stories. One of the more outlandish ones was that Ron had planned to escape involving two American Mafia hitmen with one of the men dressed as a doctor and the other dressed as a porter. The men would then kill Ronnie's guards and then Ron would have been put on a packed coach full of old age pensioners and then he would have got out of the country by cross channel ferry and then flown to Venezuela. So quite mad stories about the twins were around at that time in the early 1990s. 
The escape story came from Kate Howard. I'm not sure if this was with Ron's blessing or not, but it was just to get some cash. Just before his death, Ron tried to strangle a man called Lee Kinnearder, who was said to be annoying Ronnie. Ronnie snapped and he had to be restrained by nurses just in time before he did actually kill the man. There is no doubt that if Ron had not been stopped, I'm sure he would have went all the way and killed this man, but he was remorseful afterwards and later said, I want to go on record as saying that this is the last act of violence that Ron Cray will ever commit. On March the 15th 1995, Ron complained of feeling unwell after breakfast. A nurse thought he was having a heart attack and he was taken to Heatherwood Hospital in Ascot, Berkshire, where he was treated for exhaustion and anemia. Ron was returned to Broadmoor, but he complained of feeling weak and faint and was taken back to Heatherwood Hospital. His condition deteriorated and he was then transferred to Wexham Park Hospital in Slough, Berkshire. But unfortunately for Ron, on the 17th of March at 9.07 in the morning, he died of a heart attack. As for Reggie, he bounced around from prison to prison. He left Parkhurst in 1981 to go to Long Larkin, and he was there until 1982. In Long Larkin, Reggie tried to commit suicide just before Christmas by cutting both wrists in the segregation unit of the prison. He had been sent to the segregation due to a row with his former friend Patsy Manning. I'm not sure what this was about but after he came out of segregation he attacked Patsy Manning again and also cut his wrists again. The prison authorities put it down to attention seeking. Reg was moved back to Parkhurst in 1982 and there again he tried to cut his wrists with a broken spectacle lens. He was taken to the treatment room where he then threw a cup of tea over the water. The medical officer at the prison noted that it was a genuine suicide attempt. The medical officer reported that Reg was depressed and appears to have lost all hope. It is said that Reg wanted to be moved to Broadmoor to be with Ronnie but this wasn't to be and he was kept in prison. Reggie remained at Parkhurst until 1986. A report from Parkhurst in 1983 said about Reg, he is an arch manipulator of staff and has a few friends among his peers in the wing. He is tolerated by gangsters and is disliked by some because of the company he keeps. These include young looking types of inmates who hero worship him because of the gangster image of Cray. There are suspicions that friendships of the young inmates are of a homosexual nature. He has not shown genuine change of heart and will always remain a criminal who is prone to violence to achieve his grandiose schemes. He acts the role of a godfather and has enlisted young inmates who are promised jobs on their discharge from prison. The assistant governor of Parkhurst also later stated that Reg's relationship with a prisoner who Reg introduced as family, while not being overtly homosexual, was certainly bizarre. Another prison report about Reg in 1986 said, Cray is involved in every racket in the establishment, appearing a destructive godfather. He is linked to strong arming and the illicit brewing of alcohol. He has also had a series of homosexual affairs with younger inmates. Reg left Parkhurst in 1987 and went to Gartry Prison. He was there until 1989. He then went to Lewes Prison in East Sussex and was there until 1990. Reg was then sent back to Gartry in 1990 after a very short stay in Nottingham. He then moved back to Nottingham in 1991 and then went back to Leicester 
where he ended up in Blunderstone Prison in 1992. In 1994, he was transferred to Maidstone and was there until 1997. He also married his second wife, Roberta Jones, in Maidstone. Reg made his final prison move to Wayland. Reg had a few hearings for parole knocked back in his time. One of his last parole hearings wasn't helped by Freddie Foreman going on a documentary saying about Reg's involvement in the Frank Mitchell escape and there was also another documentary of Dave Courtney trying to sneak recording equipment into Wayland. These things went against Reg in his parole hearings. Reg was let out for his brother Charlie Cray's funeral in April 2000 but by this time Reg was also dying. He had complained of stomach pains for at least two years but was told it wasn't cancer but as we all know it was cancer it was cancer of the bladder in August 2000 Reg collapsed in his cell and was rushed to hospital where a large tumor was removed from his bowel it was obvious by this stage that Reg could not tolerate any prison regime with him being so ill so the home secretary of the time Jack Straw released Reggie from prison on compassionate grounds. Reg died on October the 1st 2000 aged 66. Reg kind of died free but he wasn't really free as he was mostly confined to a bed. This is pretty much the life of the twins in prison and Ron's life in Broadmoor. I'm sure there is some other stuff that I've missed out but this is really just an overview. The twins life in prison was hardly glamorous but they did enjoy infamy. This would have been a double edged sword though in prison. On one hand you get the adulation and respect from other prisoners but on the other hand you're very open to attacks by other inmates who want to try and make a name for themselves. By the early years in prison, Ronnie had it a bit easier than Reg had when Ronnie was moved to Broadmoor as it was more of a hospital environment. Reg tried to follow his brother to Broadmoor with his suicide attempts in the early 1980s but to no avail. He remained in the tough prison regime until his release in 2000 on compassionate grounds. The twins years in the 1960s are classed as filled with glamour but all that glamour stopped in 1969 when they were sentenced to life at the Old Bailey. The later years of the twins became a bit of a circus and this is especially after the Cray film in 1990. It seemed a bit of a Cray free for all after that in the press with Ronnie selling any story he could for a bit of money. Reggie does seem to have been bothering young offenders in prison and subsequently got a few warnings for doing this and was told to keep away from them. I'm not sure what this means really. Does it mean that Reg was a sexual predator of young men in prison? If so, it does muddy the waters a bit in my interest in the twins. I do think we have to think along those lines that Reggie could have been a sexual predator in jail when it involved young men and then this train of thought leads me to think maybe he was like that when he was a free man. I do think that because of the position the twins held in the underworld as very feared men it could have been very easy to abuse that and get young lads to do things of a sexual nature under duress. You see Reggie's behaviour in prison with young offenders does bother me. Like I said it does muddy the waters with my interest in the twins but at the same time I don't know why Reg was bothering the young offenders but whatever it was it got Reg an official warning and was, he was told to stay away from them. Maybe it was just because he was seen as a bad influence but then in his final interview he says that he tells young lads to stay away from crime. Prison life is a waste of time. Um, I get letters from all over the country. These kids write to me and um, 
I advise them. It's very difficult when kids got nothing to do with them and they've got no money um, and they've got all kinds of social problems out there, so it's easier to say than it is done. But speaking, speaking from my heart to them, I'd like to see them stay in prison. But whether they can do so, I don't know. And somebody saying that is hardly somebody who would be a bad influence. I'm not going off on one here about Reggie and his sexuality, or Ronnie's for that matter, but it does make me think that things could have been a bit more sinister. Then we also have Pete Gillette that was a convicted sexual predator, and he was one of Reggie's best friends in prison. Reggie's adopted son, I think he was called. It's hard not to think along these lines and more so about Reggie rather than Ronnie, especially in Reggie's prison life. I'm refraining from calling Reggie an out and out sexual predator of young men because I just don't know. I might open the floodgates here, but let me know what you think in the comments. Does it all sound a bit shady to you, Reg and these young offenders, or do you see it as something innocent? So that's about it, that was the Cray Twins in prison from when they were on remand in Brixton up until their deaths. I've probably missed a lot of stuff out, there's some stuff that I don't know but you're welcome to add anything to the video um, in the comments below. You're also welcome to correct me if I've got anything wrong. So I do get quite some stuff wrong sometimes so you're welcome to point that out so that's about it i'd like to thank you all for watching the video and i will see you again in the next one thank you i was actually charged with murder i was given a life sentence along with the cray brothers although i had not taken any physical part I spent 15 years in prison. I remember we went into the dock one by one. It was Ronnie up first. And he come down. And I guess really set the tone on the day. What did you get, Ron? 30 years. Well, I've just got to put my cruise to the Bahamas off for a short time. But never mind. Um, you know, we'll have a wonderful time when it finally arrives, with a smile on his face. Like, you know, it was just another day, it was just another event, I'm gonna light another player. And uh, then Reggie went up, and he went up like a fighter, like a boxer entering the ring, you know, a uh, bit of swagger and stuff like that. And he came down, how'd you get on, Reg? Life recommended 30, come in. And I was sitting in the cell, we were literally all in the same cell together. He said, don't worry, and I remember him putting his hands on my, on my neck and, you know, working the, the tensions out.